What is up YouTube? Welcome back to a, another video. In today's video, I wanted to do, do something a little bit different. Um, so I've been dabbling in photography and taking pictures as of late, and I'm trying to up my game a little bit. And then the first thing that I needed to learn apart from actually taking the pictures was how to edit the pictures. Now I'm not talking about super big, you know, significant edits like professionals do. I'm talking about simple edits that just enhance the picture just a tiny bit more. So something like this. I also think that editing really is subjective to your own style. And when you start editing as well, you kind of develop what you like and what you don't like in a picture. Obviously there are certain factors that you have to keep in mind, like the people you're editing for, like if it's a client job, um, or like what you're trying to convey through the colors and the images and the style of editing. But I think at its base, base editing is something that you develop as you go on. And sometimes you like some things more than others. And if it's a whole new way of discovering how to look at a picture and what you find pleasing or enjoying at looking at a picture. So today I wanted to show you guys how I edit my pictures. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I want to get to the point to where I can make something really, really pretty. Um, so take a really nice photo, do a minimal amount of editing, and it's just an amazing picture. And there's a lot of things that I need to learn and need to master in order to be able to do that. Um, and so uh, the app that I use is Lightroom and it's on my phone, which is even more convenient, showing you that you don't need to have a really super fancy camera to be able to take good pictures and then edit them, and then they look even better. You can take decent pictures with your phone and then edit them on your phone and then post them straight from your phone as well. It can, doesn't have to be complicated, it's super simple. And so that's what I wanna do today. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's jump into the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one, I have a little, a little traffic. Um, at the corner here from where I live. All right, so starting off, you can see that the, the picture itself is not terrible. It's not too bad. Um, it's pretty clear for my phone, not gonna lie. Um, and at the bottom, you can see where it has these little options like with masking, healing, cropping, and presets. So what I would like to, what I like to do at the beginning is I would generally just hit auto and there it's just gonna do, it, the, the software is gonna edit it the way it thinks it's best. Um, you could always leave it like that as well, but I like to dive in a bit deeper, starting from that. And what I like to do um, generally is I go down the list. For example, I start at light, and then I work, I work my way down, all the way down to my blacks, and so forth and so on. So like the exposure, I'm gonna turn it down to, turn it up to where I think, right, right about there is good. And then the contrast, I like to turn the contrast very almost all the way up because it brings in a lot of the color that that the uh, the camera wasn't able to cop capture. So I like to mess around with it. And as you can see, you also like dehazes it kind of. So I like to bring it up. Let's go around 75. 75 looks good. You can see the blue popping out from the bus. Um, and then if you hold on to the image, you can actually see the difference. So that was before, and then that was just simply adding the contrast. And so for the highlights, the highlight brings a bit back more of the light, but I don't want too much light since I've already had, since I already have a lot of it. Um, so I'm just gonna almost bring the highlights almost all the way down. I think around 60 looks fine to me. After that, though, we can mess around with the whites, and as you can see, it only affects the, the, the lighter colors, but the picture itself is pretty bright in itself, so I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna hit like a 30, 40. 40 looks good. Yeah. And then with the blacks, I'm gonna bring that down just a tad, just to get a nice good accent. So let's go negative 35. Negative 35, 34, that's close enough. And yeah, as you can see already, you, a lot of the colors are sticking out. You can see the details. You can see um, my guy standing right there looking at me. He's like, are you taking a picture of me? <laughs> and yeah, it look, it's looking good so far. 
So then moving on, we're gonna go to the color section. And here you can mess around and make this picture look however you want. But for the basics of this video, and just to show you guys the flow that I go through just to get like a nice, a nice picture out of it. Um, I like to start with the saturation and work my way up to the temperature. And so what saturation does essentially is it takes the colors that are already there and then it amplifies them more, it saturates them. So if I go up, it's going to saturate the colors even more. You see how it's getting like, the sand is getting redder, the blue is getting bluer, you know? And then that's, that's the picture fully saturated. And like that, like all the color is just popping out right there. But I don't really like that. That looks very fake to me. And I like to do minimum editing. So I'm gonna bring that down. Also, you can double click the, the icon uh, or the, the slide bar and it's gonna turn it back to zero. I like to go around 25 or 30. I think 30 looks good. And then from here, I can work the vibrance. As you can see, the vibrant kind of turns it into a black and white, but with, with still a bit of color. But I don't, I'm not going for a black and white. So I'm gonna turn the vibrance up a bit to where I feel it's okay. I think a 25 looks pretty decent. Yeah, that looks good. And so the tint also changes the, the tint color. So if I go all the way to the left, it brings out the greens. We go all the way to the, the right, it brings up the purples. Now I want a bit more green because I have a tree on top of there that you can't really see. So I'm gonna probably give it a minus four or even, yeah, a minus three, just so I can give that green a bit more love. And then after that, the temperature works on the overall color of the picture. So if I were to bring this all the way to the left, it would just turn it completely blue or bring it all the way to the right and just turn it completely orange slash gold. So for this, it was it was pretty gloomy out, outside. So I'm definitely gonna turn the temperature towards the blue side a bit more. Like around minus three. So I'm gonna turn it to around uh, four because it was, a bit, it was a bit gloomy outside and I kinda wanted to have that warm, warm feeling. And then after you're done messing with that, you can actually go even further and you can go to grading, sorry. And you can go to mix and in mix, you can individually touch on the specific colors of that photo. So in this photo, for example, let's say my sky right now is really, really not, not clear enough. Like you can barely see the clouds. So what I want, so what I want to do is I'm gonna pick, pick the, the blue color, so which is closer to the sky. And I'm gonna go to luminescence and mess around with that so I can bring out the blue. And I think a 33 works well. You we can also work the saturation. Okay, so in here, in the color mix, you can select any one of these uh, colors and just work them as much as you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the green so I can give anything that has green in my picture a bit more bounce. So it stands out a bit more. So as you can see, the tree over there is starting, like, see how it's changing color? Now it's like a bit of an orange and now it's a bit more green. So I'm gonna leave that at around 60. 60 looks good. Yep, after that I'm gonna attack bit of the blues, just add in some color. Around three. Uh, make that a little bit dark. I'm gonna hit the purples. And bring down the saturation of the reds. All right, and I think that's pretty good. If we can call that done. Um, I do want to do something a bit, with, a bit more with the sky. 
because it's definitely gray. I wanna add a little bit of blue in there. So what I'm gonna do is at the top in the, um, so I'm gonna click on the picture and I'm going to select the healing, healing, healing uh, brush and I'm gonna select So I want to do some. I want to do a little bit more with the sky up there. It's looking really, really white. I want to change that to where it's a little bit more blue, like the sky was outside. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on the masking. I'm going to click on linear gradient. And then I'm gonna select a point. I'm gonna pick this point right here. Right there. Yep, so then I'm gonna to go to light. And then here I can I can adjust everything else as well. Like you can see that even has a help function. So the exposure just brings like, it makes it look like almost like a thunder and that just blows it completely out of proportion. So I want to bring the exposure down a little bit, down a little bit. And then I want to drop the contrast so you can see the outlines of, of, the, of the clouds that were there. So like a nice 44 would do good. The highlights as well, I'm gonna drop those just a bit and bring the contrast back up there. Then shadows, there are not that many shadows up there. There we go. And then the whites, I don't need to play too much with the whites. There, blacks, don't need to play too much with the blacks. Just leave that at zero. And so at the color section, I'm gonna go ahead and mess around with the blues. So just the temperature to give it that slight little blue, bluish feel. You can see that I changed that right there. And I'm also gonna add a bit of purple slash magenta to kind of give it a separation. So I might even drop this a little bit. Drop this a little bit. And then I might up the saturation See that how that's too much? I just want it barely visible. I'm gonna up the saturation right there. And then you can do a lot more with the hue and all this, but I don't wanna do that right now. Like I said, I don't wanna make this as simple as possible. All right, so moving on. So I'm okay with the masking. So I'm gonna keep moving on to the effects that of the of, for the picture. Texture isn't something I like to mess around with because it just makes everything look like really, really drawn right now, as you can see. So it, I, I can add a little bit of texture so you can see like the roundness of certain objects like the rocks and the person. Clarity, you don't wanna mess with too much or else it looks like a water painting color. And then if you increase it too much, it just looks like a, <laughs> a retro movie or something. So I can add a little bit of clarity as well. So just around like five, be good. The dehaze isn't the best. Um, so I'm just gonna dip this down there. As you can see, the clouds start kind of chipping. So I need to go back um, in the masking and fix that. That looks really artificial. And then I like to add a vignette to my photos. I think it looks cool and it kind of just like centralizes the picture as well. So if you go to the right, it's gonna make it white and I don't understand why you'd want a white vignette, but I guess that's just my opinion. I like and prefer black vignettes because it like focuses in. So let's make that like a, a minus five, that's good. And so with the from the vignette downwards, you start working on how you start to see the picture. So with the midpoint, you can see how clear the the area around the vignette looks. So I'm gonna put that at a 20. And then the feather just mass, like makes it like lighter so you don't see it, so you don't notice it as much. And I like to have a fair bit of feather. So I'm gonna put this at a 50. 50. And then the roundness, you can pick how round it is. At this point you can't see because it's just so small. And it's also being recorded, so it's kind of hard to show you. But it is there, believe me. 
and then after that you have detail and in detail you can mess around with the sharpening I don't touch this too much because it just brings out a lot of noise in the picture but it does um, clarify a lot of uh, a lot of the the detail in the picture but as you can see the top clouds right there I messed up so I'm gonna go back and fix that right now drop the sharpening a little bit and then to fix some of the noise that's in the picture like at the top right you can use the noise reduction some people like to pull it all the way I don't see the need to so I just kind of have it like almost half not even a quarter of the way and yeah that's looking pretty good but before anything, I'm gonna go back to my masking that I did here. I'm gonna click on my mask one. I'm gonna to go to color. And in color, I'm gonna to go to the lighting. In lighting, I'm gonna bring to bring my exposure back up a little bit there you go so you can still see the blue of the sky but now it looks a lot better nice so that would be my step in editing a photo that I just took on my phone real simple real quick and you the more you use it the more intuitive you get and you start realizing oh this affects this and this does that and the, the more you play around with it the easier it is for you to edit photos very 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 fast okay so i really hope this video was helpful thank you so much for watching this video if it helped you in any way please leave a like and subscribe i really appreciate it it's going to help me out a lot with especially with the youtube algorithm i hope you guys have a good rest of your day and i will see you guys on the next one peace